Hello, and welcome to uh, the HTML5 lecture series at SNHU. I'm Tom Adamson, visiting professor. This is lecture 15, and it's event-driven I.O. Now, you might, the uh, person might ask, and here's, a, here's probably the person that would ask it like this. Because generally people that ask will look like this, their hands out this way, and say, what is an event? Which is a good question for a person to ask. What do you mean by an event, especially when it comes to uh, HTML5? Well, a person that knows what an event is would probably answer this person here, and this person that knew it would probably uh, wear glasses. And uh, it might be a, a nice lady that knows that. And she would be kind enough to, to answer him. And she would say, an event is something that happens. And you probably knew that anyway, right? You probably knew that an event was something that happens. But in terms of HTML5, that's what an event is. It's simply something that happens. And there's, uh, there's something important here. Let me draw my coffee here. Oh, that's good coffee this morning. There's uh, actually uh, two kinds of events. And of course we have the, uh, the board here that's pointing towards it and somebody's holding this here like a hand. It's holding it. Two kinds of events. One kind of event is an An internal event. An internal event is something that happens inside the computer. So we have one kind of event is an internal event. That's something that happens inside the computer. And as an example, it might be that you're playing a game and you have run out of ammo. So the internal event that would happen is that the computer would realize, hey, in a first person shooter, this gun's out of ammo. So if you tried to shoot it again inside the game, it wouldn't fire anything. So that's an example of an internal event. Or doing a calculation inside the computer. That's, and, get, and giving you back the answer. That's an internal event. The other kind uh, of event that you might expect that we would have is um, this kind. is an external event. And an external event is something that happens outside the computer. An external event could be you use press the key on the keyboard.
or you might move the mouse. Or you might say something. into the speaker, into the microphone. Or you might touch the screen. All of these are, are events that take place. So you can have these two kinds of events, internal events and external events. And that's what we're going to talk about. What I'd like to do is get the camera on the, uh, on the monitor up here. We'll move over here. Meantime, I'll have another sip of coffee. What we have here, this is a browser. And we have a, an HTML5 calculator. And this calculator has, two, has events that can happen to it, external and internal. I can move the mouse and click on any one of these. That's an external event, because I moved the mouse over one of these keys, clicked on it. The internal event is that it'll now cause a display to happen up here. If I do a, an arithmetic calculation uh, the, with using external events, there'll now be an internal event that'll show the results of the calculation. If I click on clear, which is the external event, there'll now be an internal event that will now clear this portion of the screen. And we'll see how this works. By the way, none of this is a graphic. It's all written in text. It was all written in Notepad, and we'll show that to you. You don't have to buy anything special for this. OK, coming back over here to the board. This is the boring part. I'm going to be erasing this. So we know what an event is. An event is something that happens. There are two kinds of events when it comes to talking about HTML5 here with the computer. Uh, one is an internal event, and the other is an external event. Now, let's talk about I.O. and what I.O. means. I have my, I have my fancy uh, academic notes right here, as you can see them, OK? What is I.O.? As you might suspect, I.O. stands for input, output. What happens here is that, let's say this is my browser. This is the browser. And this right here, what I see through the browser is the web page. And then uh, what happens is that I have a keyboard here. Here's my keyboard. Right here. And then uh, I have the user has tapped the key on the keyboard. And of course, we'll make it go tap. And then this is now the user input. The user input information goes into the browser. This right here is an example of an, of an external event. The user inputted something, tapped the keyboard. That was the event that happened. So that information goes into the browser now. And then there's resulting output. This is the output part. Let's say it just goes pop. And the user can now see the output. In the meantime, inside the browser, this is inside the browser, there was a, some processing going on that processed what was happening here.
And this was processing done by the browser. So if we could now put the camera back on the, on the uh, screen there, please. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap using the mouse. There's my mouse. I'm going to bring the mouse over here, and I'm going to click on the 6. So that's my input. And there was some processing that went on, and it said, OK, display a 6 out here. I'm now going to press, this is another input and an event. I'm going to press the plus, uh, click on the plus, and it displayed a plus. And I'm now going to press the 3, and it displayed a 3. I'm now going to put in equals here. Now there's internal processing to get me the, the value of these uh, two numbers. So what I see here is that I can also clear it. So if I want to clear it, I can do that. And now it's cleared. So coming back to the board here, what I see with this calculator is the browser is the platform. For the calculator. Not the desktop. So what's important here is that my um, my platform has now turned into the browser, not my desktop. There was nothing for me to install here. All I had to do was click on the web page, uh, and then I get uh, I get it through the browser, and I can tap for input, and I can get output, and there's processing that goes in on the inside of, of this here. So let me get my notes. What I'm, what I'm going to do here now is what you saw was uh, a uh, scientific a scientific application of HTML5. I could also have a business application. We've talked about before having, having uh, interactive graphics and stuff. But what I can do now is I can use these different uh, fields of study, like science or business or other kinds of fields of study, in order to have something like this. That's input-output, and it's event-driven. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back, and I'm going to look at the, let's look at the, uh, the, uh, the screen up there, please. Let's see some of the other things I can do with this. For example, I can go 2 times the quantity 3 plus 2 and the quantity, and then put equals. Isn't that right? I do the calculations inside the parentheses first. That's 5 times 2 is equal to 10. I can now come and I can divide the result. Here's my result, divide by, uh, say, 5, and I get 2, OK? And then I come back, and I can add something to the 2. I can clear this, and I can do a string of 421 of calculations, plus 6, uh, I'm sorry, plus 638, plus uh, 6638, 954, uh, minus uh, 589 uh, plus 654 equals, and there's the answer. So you might have to check it yourself. But notice all the processing, the internal processing that went on here, 
as well as the external. Now let's have a look at the source code that made this up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to view the page source and let's see what's in it. Hopefully, hopefully you can see that okay. And I'm going to spread this out so we can see the magic that's making this happen. And let's see what part of this might make sense and maybe what part doesn't. First of all, here's my HTML tags for structure. The HTML, right, that's the root element. Here's my head element. Here's my title element. Here's a link. I'm going to a style sheet, which is external, and the style sheet is called, would you believe it, calculator.css. We've sort of seen that before. Uh, this right here is a void element, the link is. Here's some script. And I've got something here called var, string input, var count function, do it. And even though we haven't gone through what JavaScript is, this is basically the code that allows the calculator to work. And again, all of this was done in a simple text editor. There was nothing to buy. Let's stay on the screen here. I'm just going to move it, scroll down. So I see what I have there is HTML. And I also see, coming back to the screen, I have something like this. It says document dot calculator dot display dot value. Uh, this right here is the document object model. I'm taking uh, one of the elements that I called calculator and I'm taking a, a sub, uh, a, a child of that element called display and I'm getting the value from it. And I'm making that, uh, this is now going to be equal to whatever the string input was. Uh, but don't worry about that. So I see I'm, I'm using style sheet CSS I'm using HTML for structure, and I'm using JavaScript to do the calculations, and I'm using a document object model in order to, uh, to merge the, uh, the, the elements with the script. So I'm going to stay on that screen, please, and I'm going to come down here. Coming back to the screen here, what I've got, uh, here's my body tag, my H2. So this element right here is a presentation element. This body uh, tag is a, is a structural element. Center, that's presentation. And what I've got here is a table. You say a table? Yeah. Isn't a table like this, you know, with rows and columns? Yeah, it is. And if you stop and think about it, when we look at our calculator, that's what it's got is rows, rows and columns. Here's the text area that we talked about before. Here's attributes inside the text area. There's the different input buttons and so on. Uh, here's another table that's in there. This right here is a table element from here, from here to, uh, to here. And then these elements in here are all child elements of this table element. And then there's attributes for the table. I'm just going to scroll on down, stay on the screen. And as you can see on the screen, that's it. Not a heck of a lot of code. And stay on the screen, please. I'm just going to click on the calculator. There's my calculator now. And if you notice, this is what makes up the table. And if you want to uh, see what the cascading style sheets look like, I'll just come here and I'll right click, get my favorite editor, uh, open with Notepad. And there's my cascading style sheets. Uh, and it says the body is to be black and the co foreground color is light green. This is for the display, for, for uh, the tables, uh, and for the elements within the tables and the buttons. And all of this determines the style. And again, it was all done in uh, Notepad. Didn't use any, any other kind of, uh, of editor or anything like that. And now the, the, uh, the platform is the browser. OK, let's come back to the board here, please.
So let's see what it was that I used in order to make this event-driven I.O. example, which we're calling the calculator. Well, the first thing I used was HTML, and I use that for structure, and presentation. Okay, And what I did was I had the root element HTML, then I had the head, then I had the body. I used tables for structure. Presentation, I used H2. Okay, And this was done uh, uh, using a text editor. The next thing that I had in there that was pretty obvious was uh, CSS uh, for style. And this set the colors and, and, and uh, this set the size of the font and what have you. And this was done using a text editor. The other thing I had in there, as you observe, was JavaScript. And this was in part uh, uh, the program for doing the calculations. And this was also done using a text editor. Then the, the other thing I had in there was the DOM, the document object model. And this was for integrating the HTML elements with JavaScript. Because as you recall, what the Doom does is that it, it essentially looks at this whole web page as a, an object, and it treats, it treats uh, the different elements as objects where they have properties and they have methods. And this also was done using a text editor. So what you see here with a scientific application for HTML5 which illustrated event-driven I.O. I only needed a uh, notepad or something like it to do it. And once I got all the stuff together with, with some very pretty straightforward coding using these four different modules, uh, I had a scientific calculator. So what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be looking more into what kind of interfaces we can have through a web page, what kind of events we can do in a web page, and how we can tie this all together for all kinds of really cool applications. Okay, that's it for this lecture. Thank you for attending.